right? Yes, Professor. Okay. So, uh, you can start with whoever wants to go first. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. You can share your screen now. We can go after Professor. Okay, good. Now, uh, I sent you guys an email if you are okay and is not bothering you. Uh, would you please turn on your camera? So I can at least I see who, who is presenting. So our first group is Hector and Sam. Hector, I see a Zoom meeting screen. I don't see anything else. Oh, sorry about that. I was sitting on my webcam. OK, hello, hello. I can see you now. So, okay. Let's do it. Okay. All right. All right. Um. All right. So, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, Sam. All right. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Samuel Garza, and um, I'm with um. With Hector, and yeah, with Hector Mata, and our project consisted on uh, the speed control of a uh, DC motor using a bug bus converter. So today we're going to have a brief introduction of the bug bus converter, uh, its operation, or design, and or output, as well as the references. So what is a bug bus converter? So as we learn in class, uh, the bug bus converter works as a DC to DC converter that produces an output voltage that could either be greater than or less than the input voltage. So the bug bus converter uses a MOSFET or a switch um, in order to control the output voltage. Um, it also uses a diode, an inductor, and an output capacitor. And then these parts will be explained on the next slide. So the bug bus converter uh, is, could be used in self-regulating power supplies. An example of an application could be a solar panel. Um, and this is because they, they input to the solar panels, so the voltage can, be, can change. So this is where the bug bus converter, um, uh, it works by regulating the output of the panels to a desired uh, voltage output. And um, so next slide. So here we can see uh, we have uh, two stages of, two states of the bug bus converter, the on state and the off state. So as we can see here on the on state, um, once we supplied a uh, voltage, there's only, um, uh, current flowing through the uh, MOSFET and the inductor and then while this is happening the the inductor builds up a charge so after it switches to the off state the inductor reverses its polarity which makes the diode become forward biased so when this happens uh, there is uh, power going into the um, capacitor as well as the load which for our case we have a, a DC motor so this is basically how, how the schematic works for the um, bug bus converter. So next slide. All right, so here we have a schematic of a control of motor drives. In the middle, we have a power electronic converter, which in our case, we're using a bug boost converter. Uh, this converter is being supplied by a power source and the output voltage of the converter is supplying, is supplying voltage to the DC motor. On the output of the DC motor, we have a controller. And then the next slide, I'm gonna show you a more detailed um, schematic of the controller itself. Um, here we have the controller. This controller um, honors the speed and the position of the DC motor. And in the next slide, we have a schematic of our DC motor using a buck boost converter that we made on Simulink. And then here we have the schematic itself. Um, in the middle, we have the buck boost converter. And on the right, we have the DC motor. 
Uh, this DC motor is rated for 10 horsepower and produces a speed of 1700 RPM. And then the results, this, this top graph is the speed that the motor is producing. This middle one is the armature current and then the bottom one is the torque. And this is the results of the output voltage. And then as you can see on the display for the DC motor, it's producing a RPM of 1600. The negative is indicating that it's going in a counterclockwise direction. And the amount of voltage that's being produced is negative 183 volts. Um, we're also using a PI control to reference the speed of the DC motor. And, oops. And then here we have our works cited page, this top uh, reference. We use their control design to help us reference our speed. And on the bottom, we have the book. And that's it. Any questions? Anybody has any question from this? My question is that, how do you control the speed of the motor with the UPI system? Oh, OK. So let me see. So I had a really tough time. Uh, the only thing I did was just just try to tune the controller the best as I could, and then just to stabilize the output of the speed. But I yeah. I had a I had a really hard time. <laughs> yeah, you know how did how did you how did you how did you became lucky to get exactly the number? You know, a bunch of. Uh, uh, because I had I had the same PI system. Yeah, I. If I didn't know the number, it would give me a different. Yeah. So I just went one by one, changing the numbers of the integrator, and then also, uh, oops, the proportional, and then whatever I was happy with, I, I just left this. Yeah. Awesome. I have a few questions from you. Yeah. The first question is in this chart that you're showing, uh, what is that input? The clock goes to the lookup table. What is that supposed to mean? Um, basically, what I understood from it is they have a bunch of set times. OK. And then from there, it, each time, it should tell you uh, how much speed is being produced at that time. Uh, what exactly that means? Like you're changing your set point? From what I believe, yeah. So you're at 1,000, then you go to 850, then you go to 1,500, then you go to 500? Yeah. OK, so then your motor speed has to follow this set point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you go to your results now? Yeah. So here. OK, so but I don't see that. Which one is the speed motor, the first one? The first one, yeah. OK, so how, do you, how can you prove that you're following the set point? Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. You're not following the set point. You, I, I, well, I have a hard time seeing your uh, vertical axis. One second, let me see if I yeah. out of the full screen. So what is the scale on your, yeah. I, so you are the zero, right? What is that zero? The speed is zero and then it goes negative? Yeah, yeah. it's going negative as shown on the uh, display on the schematic. Okay, so, th so that means well, but your set point is a, are positive numbers, 500, 850, 1,000. Yeah, as, as so we understand, yeah, as we understand uh, from this, the block post converter produces a negative um, output value. So, um, so no, 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 that has nothing to do with that. That's the voltage output. So if you can reverse the voltage output, and the, what I'm asking is the speed, the measure of the speed has to follow the set point. If it's a good controller, right? Yeah. If you if you uh, command the motor to spin at 1,000 RPM, your motor has to basically uh, spin at 1,000 RPM, no matter how much torque you have. And if you go to 1,500 RPM, then it has to go to 15 RPM. Mm -hmm. 850 RPM, you have to go to 850. So you're doing the speed control, right? That means whatever speed, it's like a cruise control. Whatever speed you put as a cruise, then your motor has to Basically, if, if the control is working properly, then you have to be at that speed. But what I see in here is your speed is uh, constantly going down, right? It's just, it's just like speeding up in a reverse direction. It never stabilizes. Yeah, we, we were having this, a lot of trouble. This control system yeah. is not working. 
It's not working. Yeah, I okay. mean, so my suggestion to you is go back to that uh, Simulink model one more time. Okay. So first thing you need to do is to remove that input, that clock and the lookup, and just put a constant input. Okay. Let's say 1,000, right? Okay. For your report, not for now. Okay. Okay. Good. And then try to make the output, you know, speed of your motor, uh, basically to reach the 1,000 RPM. No matter much how much load, or you can change that 1,000 maybe to 1,200, and then again for a separate simulation, and then you run a case study for 1,200 to see that your motor stays at 1,200. But this lookup table thing is just confusing the system, and most likely you don't have enough settling time. There's and then I the other question I have you I see an inductor between the the capacity the voltage output and the motor. What is that inductor for? I just uh, left it as this from that other Simulink file that I used. Why? Uh, because... There's no reason to put the inductor, inductor over there. Yeah. Because I, I remember your, when DC we motor, yeah. your, your DC motor armature uh, automatically is made of an inductor in series with the, with the resistor. And the inductor is large enough. You don't need to... Um, add a series inductor with the motor that, okay. that is unnecessary yeah so yeah well, we removed it we kind of had the same thing so it didn't really show a change but yeah you should not it. have it it doesn't make any sense okay okay so, but my suggestion is to remove that input put a constant and try to reach um uh, that constant uh, whatever set point is 1000 1200 that would be your first goal okay and then uh, you need to monitor the current of your inductor, again, if the current of the inductor is continuously above zero, then you're at CCM. And if your current of the inductor reaches zero uh, during each cycle, then you enter the DCM. So I really like to know if your converter is supposed to work at CCM or DCM. This is something that you have to uh, show in your report, okay. which I don't see in your presentation slides. Okay. Yes, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll work can, on that. Can yeah. you write down these comments and uh, yeah. fix your reports based on that? Yeah, yes, good. okay. Okay. Thank you, Hector and Sam. Thank, Thank you. you. It was good to see your faces after one semester. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have next group.